Good morning. Welcome to St. Paul's and a special welcome to our visitors who are worshiping with us today. Before and after services is always a special opportunity for us to talk with each other, to encourage each other, and to build each other up. That is what God is going to do as he talks to us again today through his word. And we'll ask him, God, grow us, help us to grow forward, growing in your word. That'll be the theme of our service today, the hymns and the sermon and the scripture lessons as we grow together. For our order of service, we'll follow along as it's printed out in the bulletin or projected on the screen. Please stand for the gathering right on the word. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I love your law. I meditate on it all day long. Your commands make me wiser than my enemies. For they are with me. I have more insight than all my teachers. For I meditate on your statutes. How sweet are your words to my taste. Scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. Yet so often we have despised God's word and failed to gladly hear and learn it. For this and all our sins, we bow before God and humbly ask his forgiveness. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God gave his word so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. The scriptures testify about Jesus, who lived a perfect life for you, died on the cross to pay for all your sins, and rose again to assure you of your salvation. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ, and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. 
Gracious God, you sent your Son, the Word made flesh, to call us to yourself. Help us to hear your call and to follow where you lead, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our first lesson for today is taken from 1 Samuel chapter 3. So often in life, we'd like to give God a little bit of advice after the way things have been going for us lately, perhaps. But let us always take the humble attitude of Samuel and say, Lord, not what I've got to say, but speak. Your servant is listening. The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. One night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the house of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel. Samuel answered, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me. But Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. So he went and lay down. Again the Lord called, Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me. My son, Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. A third time the Lord called, Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me. Then Eli realized that the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, Go and lie down. And if he calls you, say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. The Lord came and stood there, calling as at the other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. This is the word of our God. We continue with our psalm.
Our second lesson for today, from 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, serves as the basis for our sermon. But we ought always to thank God for you, brothers and sisters loved by the Lord, because God chose you as firstfruits to be saved through the sanctifying work of the Spirit and through belief in the truth. He called you to this through our gospel, that you might share in the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. So then, brothers and sisters, stand firm and hold fast to the teachings we passed on to you, whether by word of mouth or by letter. May our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who loved us and by his grace gave us eternal encouragement and good hope, encourage your hearts and strengthen you in every good deed and word. This is God's word. Continue with the anthem.
Please stand in honor of the gospel. Our gospel for today from John chapter 1, Philip and Nathanael had been holding on to those ancient words, looking for the one that those words promised, and now they found him. He said to them, spoke his word to them, come and follow me. And our Savior does the same for you and me today. The next day, Jesus decided to leave for Galilee. Finding Philip, he said to him, follow me. Philip, like Andrew and Peter, was from the town of Bethsaida. Philip found Nathanael and told him, We have found the one Moses wrote about in the law, and about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nazareth? Can anything good come from there? Nathanael asked. Come and see, said Philip. When Jesus saw Nathanael approaching, he said of him, Here truly is an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. How do you know me? Nathanael asked. Jesus answered, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. Then Nathanael declared, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus said, You believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree. You will see greater things than that. He then added, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated for our hymn of the day, hymn 86. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Heavenly Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God's word we consider for our sermon today is the second lesson from 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, sanctify us by the truth. Your word is truth. Amen. 
Growing up, I was never much of an outdoorsman. That's just not something that we did in our family. But when I married my wife, I learned an awful lot about it because that's her family's thing. Hunting, field trials, trail cams, and fishing. One year, my father-in-law took me and my wife and one of my brothers out onto the ice to do some ice fishing. Now, usually, I try to avoid walking on ice. Uh, I've slipped and fallen before, not fun. Maybe that's happened to you too, but now we're going to go out on a sheet of ice about a half a mile wide. And growing up in a big family, sometimes, even in the winter, we'd run out of hot water because of if you were the last one to shower. Uh, not fun taking a cold shower, right? And now I'm just going to do everything I can uh, not to fall through the ice and end up in the coldest bath I could ever imagine. Now, I trust my father-in-law, and uh, he said the ice was thick enough that day. But I've heard about how every year there are people who fall through the ice. Kind of a scary thing. And so as we were out there on the ice, every now and then I would hear a deep cracking sound echoing all across the lake. And all of a sudden, I would get down into a lower stance, lower my center of gravity, spread my feet out a little bit, standing as firm as I could, holding my arms out, getting ready to hang on just in case the ice beneath me cracked and I fell in, wanted to hang on, don't fall all the way through. Whether you love being out on the ice or you prefer to have ground, land, earth, pavement beneath your feet. God urges each of us today to stand firm and to hold fast, to hold on to his teachings, his word. It is of ultimate importance for us in the winter and throughout the year, whether we're an outdoorsman or not, hold on to his teachings for salvation and for strength. The Apostle Paul wrote this second letter to the Thessalonian Christians. There were a few different reasons for which he wrote it. He wrote that letter to encourage them amid persecution. They were going through a lot of hardship and persecution in their area. He wrote it to instruct them about the coming of the Lord when Jesus would return for judgment. And he wrote to warn them about idleness, uh, being lazy, being unproductive. As he told them about when the Lord Jesus would come again, he said that wasn't going to come until after a great falling away. Many people would perish because they refused to love the truth. Now, in the last year, we've had our ears and eyes maybe more in tune to how many people are dying around us. This last week, I heard on the radio that uh, the number of people connected in some way to the pandemic who have died in our country is climbing up toward 400,000. But if you look at some of the other stats, uh, about 650,000 people each year in our country die of heart disease. 600,000 die of cancer in our country. 40,000 die of car accidents. Uh, there's an awful lot of death around us, but if that seems like a lot of death to us, try the great falling away. How many millions and even Billions of people have perished because they refused to love the truth. Perhaps they followed after the man of lawlessness who sets himself up in God's church, exalting himself above God and opposing God and putting himself in the place of God. Perhaps it's because they followed all kinds of false miracles and every sort of evil that Satan uses to deceive people. Regardless... So many people have perished because they refused to love the truth. Like going out onto thin ice, falling through, and being lost forever. But Paul said, not you, Thessalonians. You're different. God has set you on firm footing. You are on solid spiritual ground. That's what God has done for you. And that's all owed to God. God is due all the thanks for that. Thanks every day. Thanks from beginning to end. Thanks always. Thanks be to God. Because God loved you. 
The love that God has for his people stretches all the way back before the beginning of time, before creation, and it stretches forward all the way till after this world is gone and into eternity, the new heavens and the new earth. It's because God chose them. God chose the people of Thessalonica, the Christians there. That is the Spirit's teaching, God's word teaching of election. That teaching of election is so important because it's a comfort for God's people. Because if our salvation was up to our decision and our devotion and our dedication to God, our salvation would always be in doubt. But no, it's God's choice. We are saved by his choice and we know it is done. It is done right. We can have the utmost 100% confidence in that. Then people start asking the question, how do I know if I'm chosen or not? Well, God, who chooses people to be saved, he says here that his salvation is in connection with the sanctifying work of the Spirit. Again, not anything in me, not anything that I do. It's God's work. By God's Spirit, he sanctifies people. He sanctifies them uh, through belief in the truth. He sets them apart from the unbelieving world. He sets them on a solid spiritual footing, gives them a firm and solid stance on God's word, the truth of God's word. And how does he do that? He calls people to this through the gospel. Paul says here, through our gospel, the gospel of the apostles. There are a lot of different teachers out there, different preachers have been down through the centuries, centuries who claim different Good news, who claim different teachings, but it's the teaching of the apostles sent by Jesus himself with the true good news. The good news that Jesus' right life counts for us, counts for all of our sins in our place. Jesus died to pay for all of our sins there on the cross. And then Jesus rose again, which assures us that our sins are forgiven that Jesus' word and promises are reliable, and that Jesus will raise us from the dead. Our resurrection is a sure thing. That's the gospel. And because the Holy Spirit has set us apart through belief in the truth of God's word, called us by the gospel, that means that we will obtain the glory that belongs to Jesus. Heaven will be ours forever. This is all due to God, not due to us, not from our works. It's all thanks to God, all because of God's love, all God's choice, all God's sanctifying work, all God's leading us to believe in the truth, all God's love, and all of God's powerful gospel for us, for glory forever. That's why the Apostle Paul says here, stand firm on these teachings. Hold fast to them. It means your salvation. Last month, over in Marquette County, a little ways west of here, there were five children out playing on the ice on Twin Lake. Maybe you heard about this in the news. They were out there ice skating and playing on the ice, and before long, All five of them fell through the ice. Four of those children were able to make it out. One of them did not survive. How devastating for that child's parents. How terrifying for those other children. When you and I wander away from the teachings of God's word, We are wandering out onto thin ice. Eh, Too busy for God's word today. I just don't feel like worshiping God this week. I learned all of that a long time ago. I know what I need to know. Well, it's not my month to usher. Why would I be here? I know what God says about this, but it just doesn't seem like that big of a deal. I think I should be able to do this and go this direction with my life for right now. Besides, God's word doesn't really make sense. It's it's not what other people do. 
we wander farther and farther out onto spiritual thin ice, and before we know it, it'll be too late. Going into shock, sinking away from God's presence forever. Lost. Now, if you think it's a chilling thought, hearing what happened over in Marquette County to that, to that child, if you think it'd be chilling to, to be that child's parents and to be thinking about that and reflecting on that for the next several years, what about when parents lead their children onto the spiritual thin ice by their own lukewarm attitude? It's okay. It's not that big of a deal. God's word, it's kind of around, but not that important to us. And for your children to fall through, gasping and grasping, sinking and separated from God forever. How terrifying. Playing on thin ice, wandering away from God's word. No wonder he says, hold on to these teachings. Back in 2012, over in the mountains of San Bernardino, California, uh, there was a, a decent-sized group of people sledding. They'd sled down a snowy slope and onto the ice of a lake. It was pretty fun. Things were going well. Until one of the sledders zoomed down the slope and out farther onto the lake, his, his inner tube just kept on going, and he ended up wandering onto some thin ice and fell through. Another person from the, the party went over, tried to help him, but that person fell in too. One after another, people kept going over there and then falling into the ice. There were little holes of ice all over until there were about a dozen people floundering around in the water, trying to get out, struggling desperately. That's really a good picture of us trying to save ourselves, isn't it? But today... God's Spirit comes to you once again by his gospel and pulls us out. He comes to you and me by the promise of our baptism, by the proclamation of forgiveness in the absolution, by the good news in the sermon and, and the gospel sung in our songs. He comes to us and says, Jesus was plunged under God's judgment at the cross so that you might be pulled out, saved, out of the drowning world, the world that's sinking all around us, put on solid spiritual footing, saved, sanctified by God's Spirit through the gospel. Every time we have a gospel encounter, the Holy Spirit strengthens our grip on our salvation. Every time we read a daily devotion, or every time we read scripture, every time we hear a sermon or come to worship or attend a class, the Spirit strengthens us so that we are standing more solidly on our salvation. Believe it. Hold on to it. Stand firm on it. Hang on to these teachings for salvation. But also for strength. The Apostle Paul cared deeply about those Christians in Thessalonica. As you read through 1 Thessalonians, he talks about how sincere and genuine he was among them, not looking to pull the wool over anyone's eyes, not looking just to get rich. He came to them sincerely with God's word. He treated them gently, like a mother caring for her children. He treated them encouragingly, like a father urging his child to live according to God's word. But Paul couldn't be with the Thessalonians. He wanted to be with them at that time, to build them up, to answer their questions, to encourage them in the persecution that they were going through. But Satan at that time was preventing it. As he constantly does, trying to interfere in the spread of God's word. And Paul was doing ministry elsewhere. But even though Paul couldn't be there, someone far more important was the Lord Jesus himself. That's why Paul said, may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who loved us by his grace and gave us eternal encouragement and good hope, even though Paul couldn't be there, 
God was. Wherever two or three are gathered around his word, there Jesus is with them. God the Father there too. As we read and review and research God's word, God himself is there working to strengthen and encourage us in his word. Whether you're listening to your pastor or your Sunday school teacher, your Christian parent, your day school teacher, your staff minister, as they bring the apostles' teachings to you, Jesus, the Father, and the Holy Spirit are all speaking to you to strengthen you. Hold on to those teachings. Paul also reminds the Thessalonians just what God their Father had done for them. God their Father loved them. As they were going through those trials, God hadn't abandoned them. The Father wasn't neglecting them or mistreating them. God loved them. And God gave them eternal encouragement. Not just a gift card, not just a vacation, not just dessert. Those kinds of things may be encouraging here, but they wear out. They don't last forever. They expire. God's encouragement that he gave to those people was the eternal encouragement of heaven. What could be more encouraging than that? It lasts. It never runs out. He also gave them good hope. That's what a lot of us and a lot of people are looking for in this year. A lot of people wonder, is 2021 going to be just more of the same discouragement as 2020? Well, our Father has good hope for us in his unfailing promises, in his forgiveness, in his Son Jesus Christ, and the eternal life that he has in store for us. God our Father loved us and by his grace gives us eternal encouragement and good hope. That's why Paul encourages us here by saying he wants God to encourage us in every good deed and word. It's just as important to do God's word, to live God's word, as it is for us to believe God's word. There's actually a term, there's a term for people who just want to believe what's right, but not do what's right and follow God's word and live God's word. They've been called the frozen chosen. Have you heard that term before? That's something that the Thessalonian Christians were struggling with. There were many among them who were idle. They weren't busy living their faith. They were busy bodies. But that's not us anymore. Our Father has come and thawed our cold hearts. He has warmed them. They're glowing with his love and our Savior's forgiveness. And we, according to our Father's will, we want to be active and busy living our faith in every good deed and word. Uh, That's a lot. We'll need a lot of strength for that. It's not just one good deed a day. It's not just an occasional good word. Every good deed and word. That's what we ask God to grow us in during this capital campaign, isn't it? We want him to grow us, grow us forward, grow us in his word. There's all kinds of good things for us to be doing and good words for us to be saying every day to our family, to our Christian family, fellow believers here, to our community around us, to our neighbors. Praying, inviting, calling, supporting, studying, growing, sharing, giving, every good deed and word. God, strengthen us for this through your word. He will provide that. So hold on to these teachings for strength. After I got done ice fishing with my father-in-law, it was a good experience. I'm glad I did it. I didn't catch any fish. That's more my wife's department. But I was thankful to have had that experience. Even more thankful to get back on to dry land or snowy land, uh, off the ice. There is so much that goes into safety on the ice. Telling other people where you're going, taking a friend along, bringing ice claws, wearing layers, 
having a flotation suit on, knowing how thick the ice is, following that kind of safety advice can make a huge difference out on the ice. But we have more than just advice from our God. We have his eternal truth in his word that makes all the difference between life and death, between salvation and condemnation, between strength and sluggishness. It makes all the difference. God working for us, God working in us. Let's hold on to these teachings for salvation and for strength. Amen. Please stand. Now may the peace of God, which goes beyond all understanding, guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with the responsive prayer of the church. Lord God, our maker and preserver, we praise and thank you for all that you give us day after day. You have given us your precious word to nourish our souls and to protect us from the temptations of the devil, the world, and our sinful nature. Heavenly Father, we pray that you would shield us from every kind of danger, sudden catastrophe, terrors of crime, and the pain of disease. Watch over those who travel by land, sea, and air. Keep our loved ones from whatever perils may threaten them. Bless our land, our people, and those who hold offices of high trust. Keep our government and schools upright and strong for the advancement of good citizenship and useful vocations, that we may enjoy your gifts of peace, security, and well-being. Holy Spirit, please give wisdom to our principal, Chad Marone, as he continues to deliberate his call to serve as a principal at Emmanuel Lutheran School in Tempe, Arizona. Lead him to peace with a decision where his gifts can be used for the good of your church and to your glory. Please bless the ministries there and here and throughout our Savior's kingdom. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the 93 years of grace you have given to our line of Hoppy as of today. We join her to praise you for the blessings of family and your word and the joy of salvation in Jesus. Continue to be with her all her years here until you bring her to yourself in eternity. Hear us, Lord, as we bring you our private petitions. We bring these requests before you in the name of Jesus, our Lord, and ask you to hear us. Take all that we have, our bodies and minds, our time and skills, our ministries and offerings, and use them to your glory. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated for our next hymn, 279. Please stand. Almighty God, we thank you for teaching us the things you want us to believe and do. Help us by your Holy Spirit to keep your word in pure hearts that we may be strengthened in faith, guided in holiness, and comforted in life and in death. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another. Serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Thank you so much for gathering with us today around God's Word. A couple of announcements. If we have any willing cleaning volunteers to wipe down the pews here after first service, please see John Martin in the back. Also today, Family Bible Hour, we're going to continue our adult Bible class on Zechariah in the gym, and we'll also be having Sunday school 
down in the school wing from 9.20 till about 10.10. Uh, 10. Then if you still haven't had a chance to sign up for our cottage meetings, those small group meetings about our capital campaign growing forward, uh, you're welcome to please stop by the table, talk with Kathleen Eikhoff, sign up for a time so that you can be involved and share in that ministry. Then today we have the January Wells Connection.